watching Victory Life Today with Al and Angie Burke. Welcome to Victory Life Today. I'm Al Burke. And I'm Angie Burke, and I want to thank you for joining us today. It's so exciting to teach the Word of God, isn't it, Amen. Al? That's awesome. I mean, we just, we just love it. And you know, we at Victory Life, we are into victory. Okay, there's no reason why you can't live in victory every day of your life. I mean, we do. There are things that come against us and that we have to fight and we have to walk through and everything, but there's always victory in the end of it. And you could always give God the glory. Amen. Isn't that great? Amen. Yeah. You know, I want to encourage you to go to victorylifeministries.org because you'll find so many resources there that can help you in your daily life. And one of the things we have is Hidden Treasures Revealed. It's one of my books I wrote and there's contains about 20 different teachings that the Lord has given me over the years. And, and uh, what we're going to be teaching today is in this book. So go to victorylifeministries.org or to get your copy. You won't really be disappointed. It's awesome. But what are we going to talk about today? All right. Well, today's title would be Rewards in Heaven. Okay. Now, I, you know, I've been in the church a long time, and I've never been to a church that I can remember. I've never been to a church yet where they actually taught on rewards, where they actually yeah. taught that, you, you know, you can get rewards for doing this. Um and just never did. Oh, you mean it's just like we either, we go to heaven? And it's that... just like we go to heaven, and everybody goes to heaven the same, and that's incorrect. Wow. Yeah, people usually say go to heaven, and you're in the presence of Jesus. Well, it's all but good. But there we are. That's that's the glory of it. But but the rewards thing. You know, Paul talked about a third heaven, so that would indicate there's a first set, a second, and a third. Yeah. As to whether there's more, I don't know. What exactly does that mean? Well, to me, I'm not sure because that doesn't say a whole lot about it. To me, it means there's higher places in heaven. And there are people who have um, sort of died and came back and said, yeah, there was levels in heaven. Wow. Um, one one guy in particular, um, this, this man died and then not long after that, his niece died, okay? So the niece went to heaven and met him right away. And she said, oh, man, let's go see Jesus. And they were walking toward the throne, and the guy stopped. And he said, I'm not allowed to go any closer. And then a wild story. Mm. So anyway, we're talking about rewards, and I've never been in a church that actually talked about it. It's almost like a subject they don't want to go, they don't want to talk about. Yeah, You know what I mean? And Jesus, most people say Jesus talked more about money than any other subject. Oh, yeah, I've, I've some, heard that. Some say he talked about hell and death and, and the devil. It was, some say money. And it's about, like, when you go through that, it's pretty close. But a lot of scriptures that they say are talking about money are talking about rewards. Now, I won't get into it today. Wow. But this was stuff the Lord had showed me one day, just opened up the scriptures. Anyway, so I believe Jesus talked more about rewards in heaven than any other subject. From and I can actually I can prove my case. I, w I wouldn't be able to prove it today, but I never even thought of this reward thing. It, you know, in my Christian life, I was just like most people, just trying to survive and um, just living my life. And uh, I have to tell you this story that was the Lord that showed me about rewards. It, it was something He showed me. Um, now. Some people say that I'm cheap, but it's totally untrue. I'm thrifty. <laughs> I don't waste. Oh, so that's very true. when I yes. take a flight, I get the cheapest tickets, right? So one day I was flying from uh, New York to Florida, which is common for me back in those days. And uh, so I had cheap seats, of course. And as I'm sitting waiting to get on the plane, it comes over the loudspeaker that... Uh, First class isn't sold out. And so for a $50 upgrade, you can get first class tickets. So I said, oh, man, this is awesome for 50 bucks. I said, well, it should be 20 
<laughs> Did you chew him down? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. So anyway, uh, it was me and my son were traveling anyway, and I so I went up there and I paid him the fifty dollars, and we got first class seats. So whatever. So we're traveling from New York to Florida, and I got two first class seats for me and my son. So we get on the plane, and we're all getting on the plane. We're loading on the plane, and I'm sitting in the last row of first class. Okay. And uh, the plane's kind of loaded in full, and all of a sudden, the whole plane goes into a vision. And back in those days, I used to get visions all the time. It was, it was a regular thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything normal. There was always something going on. I always saw the spiritual aspect. I could walk into church and just see all kinds of things. I'd see things on people. I would see all kinds of stuff going on in the church, mm -hmm. spiritual things. And I still do today, but not as much. Anyway, so... I'm sitting in first class and the whole thing, and I turn and I look behind me. And as I look behind me, I see rows of people, of course, and they were all people I knew. So obviously they weren't on the plane. This was a vision. Mm -hmm. All these people. And, and I was looking at them and I'm going like this. And I knew these people and the ones that were closer to God or had done more for God, they were almost in first class. They were way up. Okay. And then some of the people I knew that were just Christian, they were way down on the plane, you know? And there was this kid standing by the bathroom. And I'm looking at this going, what is going on? Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Al, where do you want to be? He said, "This is picture this as a plane load of people going to heaven. Where do you want to be? <laughs> and I said, that's it. I said, if this plane isn't going to make, I said, I want to go to Florida. And if this plane isn't going, I'm going to jump out that little window right now <laughs> because I don't want to know. That yet. And then the Lord said it again. He said, where do you want to be? And I still didn't understand yeah. it. And then the Lord said this, because I knew there was one guy I'm thinking of. He was awesome, but he, and he was close up and mm -hmm. I was looking at him and the Lord said to me, do you see that kid standing by the bathroom? And I said, yes. He said he shouldn't even be going to heaven. His grandmother prayed a man. Oh, praise now, God. Uh, there's, you, there's a whole, I can get into how that's literally biblically accurate. But anyway, so I'm in the midst of this vision, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, where do you want to be? And I said, well, I want, I want to be in Florida. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I was really freaked out. You know I, what I, I mean? Bet, yeah. So. And what the Lord had showed me was that picture a plane load of people going to heaven. Of course, they don't go to heaven in a plane load. It was just God was showing me something. And he showed everybody in a position, almost like a pecking order or a class system, all the way to the front. And that's right. Remember, he said to me, you're in the last row of first class. Where do you want to be? I was like, I couldn't answer it. And that's what the Lord showed me. He said, this is a whole plane load of people. And these are the rewards from the guy that got no reward in the back, barely got in all the way to the front. So that's when you first realized right. that heaven is full of rewards. It's of full of rewards. This was when the Lord began to change my thinking and teach oh, me cool. that there are people who go to heaven with great reward. And there are people who go to heaven and suffer loss. In other words, they get into heaven, but there is no reward for them. Wow. And wow. really, if you think about it, you, you look at the work that we've done for the sake of the gospel. Why, if, the, if we all go in the same, why am I doing this? Well, yeah, that's think right. I mean, well, I, mean exactly I love God right. and I do that's it for God just because I love God and he's been good to me. But really, you know, you could say, you know, I, I know people that'll say to me, well, like, you know, I just want to live my life. And I, I know they've said it to me the where they said everyone just tries to make their life as easy and comfortable and prosperous as they can. And when they die, and I'm glad for them, they're Christian, they're going to go to heaven. And uh, it's wow. it's not really right. I mean, a friend of mine one day said to me, and he was an awesome man of God. He had a ministry, and he said, well, I I just want to get in by the skin of my teeth. So I said to him, I rebuked him. I said, you're wrong. You should be going in with honors. Yeah, that's and besides, right. there is no skin on your teeth. You're in trouble. And he, he just didn't understand. He thought he was taking a humble position. It was actually an arrogant position. 
Well, um, let's let's start with Matthew 16, 27, Alan, because okay. this sets it all up. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Well, let me just say this now. Your salvation is not based on works. Your salvation is based on what you believe. It's not based on living holy or not holy. Well, I, well you're but your right. rewards are based on what you do. Yeah, that, no, that's right. That's right. But you know, Al, I've spoken to many Christians over the years, and I asked them the question that was asked me one time. And it, it, when you stand before Jesus, this is a question, when you stand before Jesus, and Jesus asks you, why should I let you in? What are you going to say? And I've asked this to, to several people and one individual particularly, and the man immediately said, because I because tried I'm, hard, I'm good. I did good, I was a good person, I did the best I could. But you know, that, that's, absolute, that's the wrong answer. The best you could is not good enough. Right? Am I correct? It has to be, it has to be by the grace of God. It has to be because of what Jesus did. You know, you know, your eternal home depends on you, not God. Most people think they stand before God and he looks over a list and he looks over your life of what you did and what you didn't do. And then he makes a determination at that point whether he's going to send you, let you into heaven or send you to hell. It's not God's decision where you spend eternity. It is your decision and it is made right here. And I think, Al, this is why a lot of Christians are really literally afraid to die because they're afraid of just that. Exactly. They, they won't admit it, mm. uh, it, but you don't have to think that, but they are afraid that God will say, oh, you did this. Didn't you know you weren't supposed you to do that? You did one less thing than you were supposed to. You right. did a lot of good, but if you had done one right. more good thing, you'd go to heaven. But because you didn't do that, you're going to hell. And they really believe, you know, I just had it. I'm building a house and uh, we were supposed to pour the driveway yesterday. And the day they were supposed to pour, it poured buckets, rain like crazy. So I came yes, back Lord. the next day and they said, what did you do? <laughs> you must have done something. God did this to you. You oh, know what I mean? really? Yeah, well, they were kidding. I know they were, were kidding. kidding. I know. But I know, that's the but thinking. Yes, yeah, that's, that's the right. thinking that's to even right. say that. You but, know? you know, the Bible says the only thing that— I told them, by the way, I'm awesome. <laughs> I didn't do anything. You did something to cause this. <laughs> <laughs> you but, you know, know I, want, I want you to understand. I, I got to set up a scenario here that you understand the concept of rewards. Okay, let me just say this. God loves you, and he accepts you. If you're born again, you're received into his. He loves you. He accepts you. He thinks you're awesome. You're wonderful. Uh, he talks good about you. But you can please God or displease God. Mm-hmm. Okay, Does, if you displease him, he still loves you, you're still awesome, all of that. But you can please God or displease God by the way you live. Mm -hmm. See that? So they we're talking about my driveway. But let me put it this way. My son, I'm going to use him as an example. I love my son. I really do. And <laughs> I he, hope so. He's an awesome he's kid. He's forever. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, he's, no, I gave him to God. Oh, okay. So he's a good kid. He's a great kid. He is. And I love him, and I accept him, but he can please me or displease me. <clears throat> Let's just say I say to him, okay, Brian, I want you to put the garbage out all week, and if you put the garbage out, I'll give you $5 a week for doing that. Let's just say. Well, whatever. Let's say garbage day is Friday. Friday comes and goes, and he never put the garbage out. Okay. Now, that's displeasing to me. Okay, mm -hmm. but I'll live. Okay, and that's fine. But here's the deal. If he put it out, he gets whatever, five, ten dollars, whatever I would have told him. Reward. He gets a reward. If he doesn't put it out, I can't reward him. Right. Your rewards are based on what you do, not what you believe. God loves you anyway, but he cannot reward you. So you have to do something that's rewardable. That's right. To get a reward. It doesn't mean I don't love him. It doesn't mean he's not a great kid. It's just that if You're I not say. You're kick him out of the family. I'm not kicking him out. Right. I'm just saying this. If you put the garbage out, I'll give you $5 a week. If he doesn't do it, I cannot reward him. Right. Salvation is not by works, but it's rewards free. are. Yep. 
Right. It says exactly. right here, you just exactly. read it. Exactly. Go ahead. No, well, well, we want to we want to actually start on this rewards thing here. And in Isaiah 9, 7, you gave me the scripture, Al. You wanted me to read this. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and to establish it with justice and with righteousness from now until forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. A government of no end. Yeah, God's going to use us in a government. He's going to use us because it says we'll rule and reign with Christ. Is what he's saying. And it says now, to the increase of his kingdom shall know no end. Wow. So now think about this. There's no time. There's no end. It keeps going on and on and on. And it keeps increasing. How big does it get? It's almost, you can't conceive how big this gets. Uh, is it going to be a million universes set up for, it? No, he says, it never ends and it never stops increasing. That's awesome. So how big does it get? Well, where wow. is your place in all of this? Wow. And like I said, most people are just trying to survive their life. They're trying to be as comfortable as they can be. It's okay to do all of that. But they're not focused on what does God want me to do with my life so that I can receive a reward. Well, a lot of people do ask us that, you know, with the prayer lines and everything. They do come to us and say, I just want to know what God wants me to do with my life. Some of them do. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, that's a yearning desire in sincere Christians. I really believe it. But most of the time, God has already told us what he wants us to do or or is leading us in a certain direction. And we either don't like what he's saying or it's taking too much time. And at that point, we just forget about that one thing he told us and go on to something else that maybe satisfies the flesh a little bit more. I'm not saying that's what happens, but I do think a lot of people, I think this is going to be very helpful to people because a lot of people want to know what they could do for God. But even then, those people may not even know that they're working for rewards. And we have to know that that's why you want to know what's what to do for the Lord. So you can have your rewards in heaven and help people here and get them saved and, and all of that. Why is it? Because I've taken hits for this, teaching on rewards. People going, well, who do you think you are? You want to get a reward? You want to go to heaven? Reward? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Right? How come it's okay in this life to work diligently? Let's say go to college and get degrees and you work hard so you can make a lot of money so you can get the fruit of that. You get the reward of all this work right. you did. You make a business, you grow this business. Why are you doing this so I can have the financial rewards of this? Right. That's okay. You could do that all day yeah. long. But if I say, no, I'm working my life so that when I die, I will receive a reward. And I'm going to talk about that um, <clears throat> where John said, I would, brethren, that you'd receive your full reward. Yes. God wants to reward you. He's, you know, like I, my son with the garbage can. I want to give him the five dollars. Oh I want to reward him. I want him to yes. have the money, and I want him to. But I can't give it to him if he won't put the garbage. Right, out. right. So right. what I do is I put the garbage out myself, <laughs> and then I put the five dollars <laughs> back in my pocket. No, you so, take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know, that's funny. Dwight Moody said when, when he was laying on his deathbed, oh. um, th they were all kind of like, "Crow, you, you know, this is what do you think?" He said. This is my coronation hour. Oh, my goodness. I mean, what an answer. Like, Instead, in other words, how are you doing? Are right, you okay? Right. You know? Do you ever, wow. Did you ever go to some of wow. these funerals? They're like, ooh. It's just like, it shouldn't even be like that. Right. Man, we should be saying this. He was an awesome, he or she was an awesome man of God. Mm -hmm. And they did what God had called them to do with their life. And they're going in now for their eternal Absolutely. reward. When, yes. When we get our heads straight on that, we can... Deal with losing a loved one if they're Christian. We can deal with it better because we know they're going into the presence of Jesus and they're they're going to get their full reward. So we can deal with it better. You yeah. know, I think I think people uh, just don't like the pain that sometimes is associated with death. I sure think that's understand. what they really were really that. thinking of. But uh, so again, God doesn't judge you for your sins. He's only judging your works. Right. Where you're your saved. works, your sins yes. are forgiven. 
It's not even going to be brought up. It's not even an issue. He says, I'll remember your sins no more. So how is he going to bring them up if he can't remember them? What he will do is bring up how close did you follow the plan that I had for you to live your life? Because this is God now. I want to give you a maximum reward. I want to Absolutely. reward you like crazy. But you didn't do anything. All you did was live for yourself. You did. I've seen a lot of Christians that just live for themselves. They do their own thing. They go to church on Sunday now and again, put some money in the pot and go home. And they're nice people. And you should go to church. But you need to say, Lord, what do you want me to do with my life? At least yeah. get that far where you can be rewarded. And and if you really want to know what God wants you to do with your life, God will show you. And and the thing that I want to encourage you today is not to grow impatient because he wants you to get your full reward when you get to heaven. He wants that. Yeah. He wants you to be flowing in those rewards. He does. But but so he's going to show you what to do so that you can get the reward. And I love this because he sets you up to get rewards. Yeah. It's like I remember setting my kids up when they were little so that I could reward them. Amen. You this know, is that, what God's that, trying to do, and we missed the whole thing. I did. That's what I did, and I loved it because I said, oh, look what you did. You you cleaned that up. Oh, my gosh, and I didn't even tell you, you know? And and and, and I would set them up in little ways, and, and then I could reward them, and it brought how much joy did it bring to our heart when we rewarded our kids. And God, this is why it says precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints, because he knows when you get into his presence, you're going to be filled with rewards. <clears throat> but you have to do the things God's telling you to do, and you have to earn those rewards while we are here. So if this is your only shot at that, because once you go into eternity, all that's set up. And, you know, the Lord said this to me. <clears throat> I don't know if I said this earlier about that vision when I was on the plane. He said this to me. He said, this is wide open for you. Oh, and it's wide wow. open for everyone. In other words, you all you got to do is partake of all of this. And you can be rewarded. It's wide open. You can keep. In other words, you can go. You can go from the last row of first class to the front row by what you do, what you decide. Yes. Now, I just want to say one thing: if you get a plane ticket and it's in the back of the plane, you're not a bad person. God was just <laughs> show. And if you're in the front row, you're not necessarily a good person. God was just using this to show me something. Okay, so don't freak out if you get a plane ticket and it's not where you want to sit. Just Listen to me on this. Just focus your life in on what God wants you to do with your life. And it's going to get difficult because the devil's going to fight you. He doesn't want you to enter. If, if he can't take you to hell with him, and if you're going to go to heaven, if you're born again, you're a Christian, and he can't stop that, he tries mm. to stop your reward. And he wants to laugh at you and say, oh, ho, 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 you had all these rewards and I stole them from you. And you go in with nothing because the devil says, you don't want to do that. You need to make your life comfortable. You, you don't, you, 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 you just need to, you know, cheat that guy out of that money. You so you have enough more in money. your life. Yeah. These are the, the days in your retirement. Enjoy it and everything. And, and God wants you to enjoy your life. I mean, he's given us things to enjoy all the time. But I'll go after you're focused on your. That's reward. exactly what I was going to say. The, oh, we think alike. Amen. That's really good. The focus should be working for your reward and pleasing Jesus. That's what it should be. And then everything else just falls into place yeah. and we can enjoy the pleasures in life. It's not wrong to have a boat and love going boating. It's not it's not lusting. It's just enjoying the nature that God put before us and created. So we shouldn't worry about it. But I, I, I do want to make it clear that you are saved by grace, but your rewards are by works. And you say, well, we're free from the law. We're free from works. Yes, in order to get saved and in order to get God's approval and love for you. But you're not free from getting your rewards through works. You have to work to get those rewards. Yeah, we're going to put this together eventually and make like a four CD series on rewards because you really, uh, you're not going to hear this in church. And I don't know why they never did. But when I talked about rewards, they they would just come down on me like, well, who do you think you are that you're going to get a reward? And, 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 and I want to say something about that, Al. That's not pride. Uh, the way Al just said that is humility. 
It is not pride to say, I'm getting my rewards. It's humility. You know why? Because it's in the word of God and that's what God says. So people think, oh, what arrogant, you know, like you said before, how arrogant can you be? Well, you talk, you're going in with honors. Yeah, we are. I'm making sure I'm going in with honors, Mm. you know, and that's what God, that's the attitude God wants you to have. Okay. And he wants you to expect those rewards. Now you're going to have to, it's... It's not hard, but you're going to have to find out what he wants you to do and go head in that direction. And that's important. Yep. Because if my son put out my neighbor's garbage cans, it is he's not going to get a reward. So you you got to make sure you're doing the right thing. And remember, go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org today and get your copy of Hidden Treasures Revealed. This is a a bunch of different teachings that that the Lord had given me revelation on years ago. And so that'll help you. And the teaching on rewards is in this book. And if you order that book, we will be glad to send you a free daily confessions card along with a magnet for your refrigerator to remind you to do those confessions. We thank you for joining us today. We really consider it a privilege to give God's word to you. Remember, victory is always yours through Jesus Christ. See you next time. The Bible tells us that if we cry out for knowledge and ask for understanding and search for them as we would silver or hidden treasure, then we will gain the wisdom and the knowledge of God. God's Word is full of treasure, precious, highly valued truths that are worth far more than gold or any other earthly treasure, and it will enable you to live life victoriously. In my book, Hidden Treasures Revealed, I share the revelations that I've received from the Lord over the past several years, including how to rely on grace rather than self-effort, how to truly give our cares and worries to Jesus, how to practically use our God-given authority to fight the devil and win, and much more. God's plan for His children is to live above their circumstances, not beneath them. Understanding the truths within this book will help you do just that. My prayer is that these teachings will encourage you to dig deeper for yourself and reap the benefits that will change your life forever. The ball is in your court. God has already done everything to ensure your success in this life through the death and resurrection of His Son, Jesus. Don't let His promises go to waste. Seek them out, find them, and walk in them toward a life of victory. Go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org and get your copy today. Al and Angie Burke are the founders of Victory Life Ministries, an organization that is designed to help you live your best life so that you would be inspired and know that God will fulfill all of your needs according to His purpose. Live a life set ablaze by faith, filled with purpose. Live life above your circumstance. Thank you.